that lets you save... Look here. True form life. Green look on Welcome to another edition of Exploring Mind and Body. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia. You've just tuned in to the best health and wellness show around. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being part of our True Form Life community. We're always working to bring you better guests like today. We're working on better content. we got the best fans on the planet. Thank you so much for your comments, downloads, shares, everything that you do to contribute to the show and make it what it is. We certainly wouldn't be here without you. Just a quick word from MAK Mystic Expressions. This is a Himalayan salt company that specializes in pink salt. Now, personally, I feel this is a small transition we can all make to improve our health. Now, if you head over to makmystic.com, they have all kinds of information and products like Himalayan salt lamps, salt shakers, salt grinders, heat bags, and more that, that will help you better influence your health and lifestyle around pink salt. makmystic.com. Today we got John Stanton coming on. He's the founder and CEO of The Running Room. Now, they have over 120 stores, over 1,300 employees. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to have John on the show. He actually started the running room in his basement. It was actually a tiny room. (laughs) <laughs> that they called the running room. So he's going to talk about how that started. Then we're going to get into more tips concerning environment, how to get started, so much information to take away here. And I also want to announce the debut of our fi- family dog, Mad Max. <laughs> so I was actually looking after our dog, family dog here, Max. He's a black lab. He's a country dog. He lives with my brother about 30 minutes out of town. And every time he hears a noise, he needs to let them know that he's around. So he wanted to be on air with us. So you're going to hear that. I think radio is a bit too serious to begin with. So we're going to lighten things up. You're going to hear from him a couple times throughout this interview. And that's what we got coming at you. So I hope you're excited. Let's get this party started. Sit back and enjoy. We got all that coming up on... This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. All right, welcome to another edition of Exploring Mind and Body. You heard all about John Stanton in the, intro, in, excuse me, in the introduction. Without further ado, welcome to the show, John. Hey, Drew. Good to be joining you today. It was great. It was great. Uh, I had a fantastic experience at the Edmonton Marathon there, and I got to meet you and, and meet some of your other vendors there. And uh, again, I appreciate you coming on, and I want to thank you for your time before we jump into it here. Well, thank you. I really enjoy being with you. So, John, you're the the founder of the Running Room, and uh, you got a pretty cool story. I'd love to. I'd love for you to have have to you share the your story with our audience and let us know how this all began. Well, you know, it all began with a, a little fun run, and at the time, I didn't know fun and run could appear in the same uh, sentence, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my two sons, uh, one of them was very active in high school and, and athletics, and he was running the Edmonton Journal, had a 10-mile road race, and he was going to be in that, and they had a little fun run, a two-kilometer fun run in association with the race, and his younger brother said to my wife, uh, I'd, I'd like to go into this. And my my wife said, uh, sure, as long as Dad goes with you. And Dad at the time was this portly 238-pounder. Uh, I was a smoker. Like so many people, I'd thrown my energies into my family, my work, and community activities. And uh, had gotten out of shape, not intentionally, but had gotten out of shape. But when your son asks you to go in, you, you say, sure, you'll do it. First thing I had to do is figure out how far 2K really was. So I, I went out and measured it in my car, and I thought, wow, that's a that's quite a distance. But long story short, I, I huffed and puffed my way around the uh, 2K and did make it. Uh, and when I finished, uh, I you know, I was... Uh, determined that I better do something about it. You know, my father had 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 heart disease at an early age. My brother had heart disease. And I thought, you know, I'm a prime candidate for it. So I started to run, and I, I started running every morning under the cover of darkness. And I'd run from one set of light standards to the other because I couldn't run any further than that. And I'd walk one set, and I'd run one set. And over a period of time, I was able to run more and, and uh, walk less. 
And then I started entering the 5 and 10K local races because I kind of fell in love with running. And um, next thing you know, I'd, I'd dropped the weight. I'd lost about 60 pounds. I'd quit smoking. And people kept asking me, you know, how I'd gone through this epiphany and gone from kind of couch potato and spectator to athlete. And I said, well, you know, anybody can do this. You just need a little advice and a little counseling and you can do it. So that's why I opened the running room. It was mainly as a resource center for people to get information and get encouragement and what have you into running. And uh, as they say, the rest is kind of history. The first store opened here in Edmonton, and now we've got uh, over 100 stores across Canada, and we're also in the U.S. and Hawaii. That's that's crazy. I mean, what was it like to did didn't you begin your, the actual running room in a in a house or a basement? Shared yeah, it with? was. Uh, yeah, the original store was uh, an old house that I shared with the hairdressing salon, and hairdressing salon had most of the house. So I had the living room and the the uh, kitchen, and she had the other rooms. And uh, you know, the the original store was uh, uh, ten by twelve uh, room and. You know, the night before we were going to open it, uh, a friend of mine came by and said, you know, what's this going to be? And I said, well, it's a running store. And he said, well, what are you going to call it? And you haven't got a sign up yet. And I said, well, I don't know, John's running room. And he said, well, that's pretty lame. (laughs) And we kind of joked and said, well, it's one room of this old house. What are we going to call it? The running room? And that's kind of how the name stuck. uh, Because we thought that's that's kind of a cool sounding name. (laughs) So. It did literally start in a room of an old house. <laughs> it was on 112th Street in Edmonton. It's it's where Stantec's uh, current tower is. The Stantec has two towers on 112th Street. It's their north tower. Uh, and there were a couple of old houses originally on that site, and that's where the original store was. And what what was the service or what was the main idea? Is it was it a advice a running group? What were you guys doing there when you first started? Well, when we first started, you know, we were selling tea, uh, you know, t-shirts and uh, just cotton t-shirts and, and running shoes and some socks and what have you. And then I wanted to teach people. I wanted them to have a place to come and people who were like me that wanted to get started in it. I wanted to show them how to get started because I've had so many people ask me how to get started. And then uh, we were also selling shoes to the existing running community. You know, I was a member of the uh, Edmonton Roadrunners at the time, and there were a lot of the runners that were saying, you know, you needed a good running store. So we got into, you know, some track suits and what have you later on. But when we first opened, it was just running shoes, socks, and cotton (laughs) T-shirts. And uh, that's where we we started selling. And then, you know, the the rest kind of evolved. You know, we have our own line of clothing now, which uh, evolved mainly because of, the need for men's and women's clothing. You know, the sport, when I started to run in 1984, was dominated by men. Today, it's dominated by women. And and there's been a huge demographic change in the running community. But, you know, women came to the sport much like they came to the work environment. As they came to the work environment, they wanted to take up running because it fit busy schedules. Uh, you know, they're trying to balance their careers and family life the same as the guys have previous to you know, the 80s. And as women came to the workforce, the running was a natural kind of uh, gravitator for them to go to because it, it uh, it's collegial and it's in a, in a way uh, you can go out and do it in a group and be encouraged by one another and supported by one another. Or you can do it solitary depending on your, you know, career path. If you're in a busy, high intensity workplace, sometimes the solitude of a of a solo run is what you need. And if you're working in a cubicle like so many people do today, where you you have a lot of interaction, but it's it's uh, electronic, it's not social, uh, that's where sometimes a group run is the magical thing that works for people. And there's so many people that were so busy trying to get their university education or post-secondary education of, or trade, and they didn't have time to, uh, you know, sort of spend some time in athletics. And they needed some basic coaching to just get themselves back. My name is Jasmani Lewis. I'm from Florida. I've been enjoying exploring my body for quite some time now. Just for the simple fact that Drew is a genuine person. His content's amazing. And he touches the people with his words. So uh, the listeners that are out there listening, continue listening. For the new ones, you will not be upset.
Thank you, Drew. All right, so I want to tell you about the Silver Fern Aesthetic and Vein Clinic. Now, they specialize in a few areas. One is skin care. They'll tell you the difference between professional skin care and over-the-counter skin care. This is something that they specialize in as well as offering education to their customers and clients. Mineral makeup is one of their non-toxic type of products. They have no talc, perfume, dyes, alcohol, or anything else that may clog your pores. They also specialize in varicose and spider veins. I actually had the opportunity to stop in there, and they helped me better understand who's more likely to get them, how to treat them, and even how to prevent them. And then they also offer detoxing products and services such as their universal contour wrap. They offer a clay solution. This gets rid of toxins, increases your energy levels, and much more. If you want more details, visit their Facebook page at Silver Fern Aesthetic and Vein Clinic. They're also offering free consultations from Dr. Jackson and their other skincare professionals. You can find them in Didsbury across from the train station, or you can give them a call at 403-335-8829. You know, the running room is is known for certainly selling running shoes and clothing and technology that we sell and books and everything else, and that's how we make a living. But the reality is we, we build our customer base and our customer loyalty with our clinics or run clubs and the information that we supply to the running community. And, and that, I think, has been the secret to our success to, to date, and that's what will allow us to continue to grow into the future. I thought that was interesting when I heard about the running clubs that – uh, meet uh, and or organized at these specific you know retail locations I've, I've never heard of anything like that before to tell me more about that well it's done for two reasons one is uh, people need support I know that when I first started to exercise and I went out uh, exercising you know I I did it under the cover of darkness because I didn't want people to be you know laughing at me and here's this guy going through a midlife crisis kind of thing <laughs> and uh I, I knew that people, you know, the number one thing that keeps people from starting an exercise program when you've been away from it is fear of embarrassment. So to get over that fear, the, the best way to do it is to put people in a group environment because when you do, it becomes social. They're all kind of like-minded. They're all at the same level of performance. In other words, they're all beginner runners when they, they start in a learn-to-run program. And if they're training for a 10-kilometer distance or if they're training for a half or full marathon, they're in with their peers. In other words, the marathon people go out together, the Half marathon people go out together, but if you're brand new and just getting started, well, you go out with the learned run people, and you'll be doing combinations of walking and running, and and gradually we'll be able to build you up in your overall performance, and you'll do it in a fun, social, uh, collegial uh, manner where you feel part of something, and you have that group support around you, but there's also what I call positive peer pressure. Once you commit to the group, you're not only committing then to yourself to get fit and get active and and become a runner, you're also committing to the other people in the group. So if it's a rainy day or a snowy day and you don't show up and everybody else does, you, you kind of feel guilty and they'll make you feel guilty <laughs> and and, and uh, it'll keep you consistent and, and certainly help with your motivation. Because we find with beginner runners or even experienced runners who are training for a marathon, the big thing they need is is the motivation and inspiration. And some people can do that on their own, and some people uh, need, you know, outside uh, influences on that. And that generally comes from being around like-minded people. That's that's fantastic. I mean, that means so much to have that group support. That's something that I emphasize when I teach or talk about healthy living, being active, whether it's nutrition or, you know, when involved in some type of fitness program is that group support. It means everything. And it's in most in most cases, it's, it's really the difference between success and, and turning this into a lifestyle or just going through a, you know, a short detox or or a few days of inspired runs in this case. Well, that's right. And, and, you know, we'll supply people with the, the, the training programs. We'll tell them how far to run, how, what intensity to run and the frequency and what have you. We'll give them, uh, you know, information on nutrition and we'll give them information on sports medicine, uh, what to do, you know, if they, do get a overuse injury of some sort, how to avoid injury. You know, we'll talk about stretching, we'll talk about cold weather running and hot weather running. But most importantly, when we put people in a group environment, is they have that interaction 
<clears throat> with other people where they they uh, garner the information that they're looking for and they may be afraid to ask it in a group environment in the class uh, some question but when they're out running with a buddy they'll say hey have you ever you know and whatever question they have they they often get answered or they'll say no let's ask the coach about that and and a lot of times that's the difference between people sticking to a program and not sticking to a program and our program is proven successful you know we've graduated over 800,000 people in our clinics across the country. My books have sold, you know, more than a half a million copies. And, you know, we're over a million people through our various clinics and training programs. And when you think about the population of Canada, we've influenced a lot of people in Canada. So it, the program works, and it primarily works because of the group support. And, you know, you, were, you observed the race in Edmonton, and you know, one of the things you saw in Edmonton were the pace bunnies that were out there that were provided by Running Room. And, uh, you know, the, the pace bunnies are people in the community who volunteer their their time and their effort. And generally, if somebody was going to run a two-hour uh, half marathon, as an example, and be the pacer for that, there's somebody who can, in most circumstances, run but probably a 145 uh, half marathon. But they're going to do it so that other people can use them to pace off of them. So, in other words, it, it's that sense of community in a time our world needs more community that running truly does build. Uh, I mean, so much of our success has been the, the contribution by our clinic leaders, our group leaders, our pace bunnies, all those people that believe in the same values that we do and believe in the fact that, you know, you can be athletic at any age, whether you're 18 to 25 or whether you're 55 to 75, you can still be athletic. And, uh, you know, I think ensuring that there's this all-inclusive attitude towards it is, is really important. All right, don't go anywhere. We got tons of more information coming up on exploring mind and body. All right, I just want to take a moment to tell you about the tire shop. Now, this is one of those businesses that I'm actually excited to tell you about. I'm excited to be working with and to recommend. Now, the tire shop is one of those places that you walk into and it kind of feels like home a bit. There, there's a family run business for 40 years, if you could imagine. So they're definitely doing something right. When you walk in, they, you know what is cool about them is they don't say, Hey, well, how can I help you? They don't feel like you're rushing out the door. They, they actually say, How you, how are you doing? And ask you about your day before they get into the service. And I just think that means so much in today's day and age. And I went in there. I was flipping tires for one of my fitness routines. And I said, hey, Aaron, do you have any old tires I could use? So he went out back and got this big tire for me. He helped me load it up. That was that was super cool. So the tire shop isn't just about tires. They do oil changes. They check your battery. They do rotation. So if you have any issues with your car at all, go ahead and check out the tire shop here in Olds. Go to people that you can trust. And I'm telling you, without a doubt, these are, these are going to be like family if you have any type of car issues. You can give them a call at 403 403- Five five six seven six six zero. We see it when people come into the clinics. <clears throat> Often they come into the clinics and they're nervous because they they think, oh gee, I'm here. I am at thirty five or forty five, whatever it is, and I'm trying to get back into shape and I'm I'm trying to lose weight. And I look around, everybody's younger than I am, and what have you. Or uh, the difference is is when they come and they they join a learn to run program or they join a half marathon or ten k or or what have you. Nobody cares whether you're male or female, how old you are, or what have you. The only way you're judged in the running community is are you doing the half marathon, the full marathon, the 10K, 5K? <laughs> and and it, it's sort of this sense of uh, commonality that we have and respect for each other that I think is very powerful. But, you know, somebody who's training for their first 10K, as an example, uh, know the amount of effort it takes. And whether you're, you know, 22 years old or whether you're 72 years old, you got to put in the same kind of uh, time and, and what have you. And the 72-year-old may not run as, as fast, but the 22-year-old will certainly respect them because they know they've had to put in the work and, and what have you. And, you know, sometimes the faster runner will will... Uh, you know, be put on accolades and, you know, the, everybody in the group will say, wow, they were so fast. But yet often the faster runner will look and marvel at the person that's out there for 
a significant amount of time longer than they were and marvel at their their tenacity and their diligence that they saw themselves through to the finish line. So there's that kind of mutual admiration society that's built around running, I think, that is really an important part of running. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It just sounds like there's a you know a deep respect for all types, no matter what you're doing, who you are, mm-hmm. where you came from. It's it it just it sounds like a cool community. I'm going to start running yeah. now. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that, that's, that's good. And you know, you look at the benefits from running. It, it uh, you know, there's the social benefits, which is so important today because uh, you know we're, our world is full of stress. We have you know economic stress, and certainly we've experienced that in Alberta. You know, you have stress from things like the forest fires and all the natural disasters going on. You you've got world stress going on, and political stress and uh, you know there's no nice way to say it or, but our country's been at war so there's many uh, military families who have a whole different kind of stress on them and you know the running builds a sense of community and a sense of camaraderie when we need it uh, it allows us to as adults to be children and to play again and I think that's an important element for everybody and you know not only is it good for you physically we know that because of the the stress busting effects on running it's good for us mentally we also know that when we exercise it fires up our creative intuitive side of our thinking and that's when you know decision making is easier uh, stress levels are easier we find we sleep better uh, there's a natural transition to healthier eating the more we exercise because I know that the less I exercise the more likely I am to have nachos and beer or chocolate shake and fries because <laughs> I'll reward myself with food where if I'm exercising on a regular routine I think about my food rather than as a pleasurable reward system for me. I think of my food as as fuel for my body. So then when I'm thinking about, you know, will I I have that burger and fries and a chocolate shake or will I maybe have the salad and a a glass of water or juice and make the healthier choice and the healthier choice often will allow your performance to improve. But it's a direct result of... uh, of, uh, you know, being involved in, in running because we start thinking like an athlete and an athlete thinks of food from a performance standpoint. A non-athlete thinks of food from a reward standpoint and a pleasurable standpoint. And, and I think that that also helps. This is David Hermita from the great state of Texas. Stay right there. We'll be right back on Exploring Mind and Body. I want to take a moment to tell you about Complete Truth Protein. Now, Complete Truth Protein is a whole food supplement. This means it's made with whole foods, being quinoa and hemp hearts. Many times when we look at conventional supplements, our body has a difficult time absorbing, digesting, and utilizing all the nutrients, which is why I always prefer and suggest whole foods. So if you look at Complete Truth Protein, it's it's a plant-based product. It's gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free and GMO free. It's also a raw product. So we're looking at all kinds of ways to improve your health. That's going to be easy to utilize, digest and absorb. And more than anything, burn off is energy. The very first thing customers tell us is they can't believe how much more energy they have from adding complete truth protein to their smoothies. So head over to hempy.ca slash CTP. Now, if you want 15% off, all you have to do is enter an EMB in the discount code. Hempy.ca slash CTP. You know, I I often hear people say, well, I just don't have time, though, because it's so so busy. But, you know, if you look at the presidents of the United States, and I I won't include the current one or the ones running for election (laughs) currently right now, but if you go back to, you know, uh, George Bush, uh, both Bushes, George Sr. and George Bush, Bill Clinton, were runners and and made time for exercise. George W. uh, even had a treadmill on Air Force One so that as they were flying, he could exercise. Bill Clinton, with all his escapades, still had time to, to make time to exercise. And I think if the President of the United States can make time to exercise, all of us can make time. I think they're the busiest person in the world, probably, and with the most stress on them. And if they make time and know the value of exercise, I think that that's a very vital, important part 
of your your routine is to make time for yourself and you know if you care and and value the people that are important to you in your life the number one thing you have to do is look after yourself and the more you look after yourself the better you're able to look after those that are meaningful in your life john i want to thank you for your time I know you've got you have books out there. I know you have running rooms are all over the place. Tell us if our listeners want to get more involved with running, if they want to follow you on maybe on social media. Can you give us some contact information about what's going on with you? Sure. I mean, the best site to go to is is runningroom.com, and on there is uh, a battery of information. There's a whole lot of training information. There's information if on products if you want it. There's information on training. There's a list of our, our stores and what have you. You can follow me on Facebook. I'm also on Twitter, and every day on Facebook and Twitter, I, I'm pumping out some motivational and inf- inspirational uh, tweets and, and stuff that hopefully will get you motivated and and allow people to become active and if you're sitting listening to this today and saying gee i i'd like to get myself in shape i'd like to get back and get fit i'd like to become athletic again uh, you can do it and and it just takes a little support and if you drop into the running room and tell them that you're new and just coming back they'll not only get you fitted with the right shoes but they're more importantly will be able to provide you the information and if you live in a rural community somewhere and, uh, you know, you can always pick up a copy of one of my books. It's got the information that we teach in the clinics. Uh, and you can, you know, start your own little training program, you know, depending on where you live. If you live in Mundare or somewhere and there, you don't have access in the community to a running room, uh, you can pick up a copy of the book and maybe get the Mundare Running Club started in Mundare. Fantastic. Well, we're going to link, put your links all together in the, in the blog post. We'll put a book in there too. I know you've got a number of them and uh, we'll direct traffic that way. Hopefully we can get some more people involved in running and, and knowing more about what you're doing. Great, Drew. Appreciate talking to you today. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Thanks for sticking around till the end with us. Thanks for hanging out. I hope that show was beneficial. Hope you got a lot of information out of it. I certainly did. I so much appreciate John's time and his support to come on and be a part of Exploring Mind and Body. We're moving forward with three stations on air. Super excited to be on new markets. If you're in the Vagerville area, thanks for being with us. If you're in the Sussex area, thanks for being with us. And as always, Old's our main station here. We so much appreciate your local support to make this show possible. And those of you who are tuning in from our podcasting platforms from all over the world, thanks for being here and for your support as well. Before I let you go, just a quick mention from Plant Based Mom from Canada, who is actually Shoshana who is the co-host of the Plant Trainers podcast. Her and Adam are actually going to be interviewing me next week, so stick around for that. This is what she said. What do you get when you cross a radio superstar (laughs) and a fitness nutrition expert, Drew Tadia, and his Exploring Mind and Body podcast? All jokes aside, this is a great show to get you on your way to better health. As the co-host of Plant Trainers podcast, helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness, I'm a really tough critic. Drew is knowledgeable, professional, and raw all at the same time. Love it. Let's hear it for Canadian podcasters. Thanks so much, Shoshana. I'm looking forward to sharing your show and your interview with me coming up here next week. If you want to leave a review for us, we very much appreciate those. We read them on air sometimes. We put them on blog posts, social media. So we so much appreciate that to help us out. Move up the ranks in iTunes and have more people get the opportunity to hear Exploring Mind and Body. If you're interested in our app, head over to trueformlife.com slash EMB app. We got some free gifts there for you. You can download the app on any Apple device and we also have a free 10-day fitness challenge for you. All you have to do is head over to trueformlife.com and turn your contact details so we can send you a brand new workout each day. These workouts are 20 minutes or less, no equipment required. We also have tips along the way to help you out. Production brought to you by my man, Magic Mark Daly. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com. 
Exploring mind and body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia would not be possible without the help of GDK Gravel and Sand. GDK Gravel and Sand, now offering all products in half and one yard bags. Give them a call today for more information. 1-877-335-2091.